Sixth grade Excel, lesson 137. Adding and multiplying measurements, then simplifying units of measure. All right, here we go. It is 4.36 a.m. What time will it be in 40 minutes? There is a couple of steps to solve this problem. First of all, you add 4.36 plus 40 to get 4.76. Well, there is no such time as 4.76. And since there are 60 minutes in an hour, Subtract 60 from 76. Right here, we're taking an hour out of this uh, 76 minutes and add one hour to the hour column. So I'm adding one right here to the four. So basically what I'm doing is I'm taking, let me make this a little bit smaller. I'm basically taking an hour out of here and moving it over to here. And so I end up with 516 because I take the hour out of the 76 minutes and I'm left with 16 minutes. I move that hour over to the hour column and it's five hours. Corey worked for two hours and 48 minutes on Monday and three hours and 57 minutes on Tuesday. How long did he work in all? So we're taking the elapsed time, the time that went by. The first one is two hours and 48 minutes. The other one's three hours and 57 minutes. And we're adding these together. You get five hours and 105 minutes. Well, again, what we want to do is move an hour from here over to here. So I take 60 minutes out of the 105 minutes, which is, leaves me with 45 minutes in the minutes column, and then I'm moving the one hour over to here, which then makes that six hours. So five hours and 105 minutes is the same thing as six hours and 45 minutes. We never want to have more than 59 in the minutes place. Once it gets to 60, of course, that's a whole hour. Here are some other samples for you to look at, and this is uh, moving some different kinds of measurement where we have too much in one column and kind of moving it over to the other one. Sid has four gallons and six quarts of red paint and two gallons and four quarts of blue paint. How much paint does he have? Well, we add up the two amounts. Here we have four gallons, six quarts, two gallons, four quarts. When we add them together, we get six gallons, ten quarts of paint. Well, ten quarts is too many. The most that you would want to name, and I don't know why they did it, is six and four here. But if you have four quarts, you have a gallon. And so what they're doing is they're taking these ten quarts and converting it into gallons by dividing it by four. Ten gallons divided by four, or ten quarts, excuse me, divided by four quarts in each gallon gives you two gallons and then two quarts left over. Picture it like this. Here are your 10 quarts. Okay, there's eight, nine, 10. Let's say these are all quarts of paint. Well, these four quarts right here make a gallon. And I'm talking about these 10 quarts here. And then here, these four quarts make a gallon. And then I have two quarts left over. So I have two gallons and then two quarts. I take these two gallons and I combine it with the six gallons that I already started with to make a total of eight gallons. And then these two quarts that are left over go right there. So the answer is eight gallons and two quarts. Paige bought four boards that are each two feet seven inches long. How much lumber did she buy? So they're taking the two feet seven inches and multiplying it four different times. 7 inches times 4 is 28. You cannot carry the 2 up here and put an 8 down there because these are not 10s and 1s. This is inches and feet. So I'm just going to keep the inches and feet separate here. Okay, 7 times 4 is 28 inches because 4, if you picture 7 inches, 7 inches, 7 inches, 7 inches, all together, that's 28 inches. And then 2 feet times 4 is 8 feet. 2 feet, 2 feet, 2 feet, 2 feet. Altogether, I have 8 feet. So the answer is 8 feet, 28 inches. But I don't want to leave it like that because the most inches I'd want to have would be 11 full inches. You could have 11 and a half or 11 and three quarters or something. But you never want to get to 12 inches because 12 inches is a foot. So what they do next is they convert the 28 inches into feet. So I do 28 divided by 12, and that's 2 remainder 4. That means 2 feet because 2 feet is 24 inches. And 24 from 28 leaves you with 4. So this 4 means how many inches 
you have left over after you have the two feet. So I take these two feet, combine it together with the eight feet that I had when I added them together, and that's a total of 10 feet, and then I have four inches left over. So 10 feet, four inches is the way to convert that. All right, here are a couple of problems. We're gonna go ahead and do the first one first together, and then uh, you can do the next one on your own. So stay with me here on number five. Ty shipped five boxes that each weigh two pounds, four ounces. How much did they weigh in all? So we're going to take two pounds, and let's put labels with these so that we don't get confused. Four ounces, go ahead and write that on your page, and we're going to do that five different times. All right, you might have to pause the video if I'm going too fast for you, but uh, just go ahead and put this on your paper and uh, make sure you're understanding what I'm doing here. Four ounces times five, well that's going to be 20 ounces, right? And then two pounds times five, that's 10 pounds. So my answer is 10 pounds, 20 ounces. Well, how many ounces are in a pound? There are 16 ounces in a pound. And so I want to move a pound from here over to here. So I, I shouldn't have an answer that's higher than 15 here. No 16s on the outside. So I'm going to take 16 off of there, and I'm going to add one pound onto there. That leaves me with four ounces after I take the pound off and 11 pounds. So that's my answer, 11 pounds four ounces. All right, go ahead and pause the video, try number six, turn it back on when you're ready for the solution. Vicky has two strips of ribbon that are two yards, two feet long, and three yards, two feet long. How much ribbon does she have in all? What you should have done is put these two together. You have two yards, two feet, and you should keep your labels in your show work so that we don't just have a, th a 22 right there. That wouldn't make much sense. Three yards, two feet. When I add them up, because I'm combining these two together, I get four feet here. Remember, keep it, keep it together. We want to separate the yards from the feet. We don't want to be mixing those. Five yards, four feet. Well, how many feet are there in a yard? There are three feet in a yard, so we're going to take three out of the feet, which is going to leave us with one foot, and that three feet is equal to one yard. If you put a three over here, you're not quite getting what's going on because I'm taking the three feet out and I'm moving over here as one yard, not three yards, because I'm all I'm doing is moving stuff. I'm not really adding or subtracting anything from this total amount. I'm just moving it from the feet column over to the yard column. And so we get six yards and one foot. So that's our answer, six yards, one foot. All right, here are two more problems. Pause the video and turn it back on when you're ready for the solution. It says it's 1045 in 45 minutes. So you should have 1045. You should add 45 minutes to that. Now you want to keep these separate. You don't want to be carrying over from the minutes into the hours. You have eight, and you wouldn't do that anyway on this one. Sometimes you, if, if you get over 100, leave that 100 over here in the minute side. And then 10 plus nothing is 10. This is the hour of 1090. There's no such thing as 1090. So we're going to take 60 away as an hour and add that hour over to this column. I'm moving an hour from here over to here. 90 minus 60 is 30. 10 plus 1 is 11. So the time of, that should be a colon right there, but the time of 1090 is the same thing as 1130. And it gave us a label in the question, so we need to put a label in the answer, 11.30 p.m. If you forgot to do that, add it in. All right, number eight, Seth worked for eight, uh, eight days for seven hours and 45 minutes each day. How long did he work in all? So seven hours, you can just put H, 45 minutes, M for minutes, and he did this for eight days. So it's the same thing eight times over and over again. I can just multiply. I do five times eight is 40, carry the four. 4 times 8 is 32, plus 4 is 36, so I've got 360 minutes. 7 times 8 is 56, so i got 56 hours, 360 minutes. All right, how many minutes are there in an hour? There's 60, right? So I'm going to do 360 divided by 60, and of course that comes out, it's not 6, but 60, and of course that comes out to be 6 hours, because 6 times 6 is 36, so 6 times 60 is 360. So I'm moving six hours from here over to here, add the six hours on, and I get 62 hours. Now we have a little bit of another issue. I don't know if you wrote that as your answer, but think about this. 62 hours, that's more than a day. 
62 divided by how many hours there are in a day? 24, right? 24 times 2 is 48. Uh, I don't think it's going to go in again. So we're going to put 2 here, 48, and 12 minus 8 is 4. And we borrowed from that to make that a 5. 5 minus 4 is 1. So we got 14 hours. So really what we have is 2 days and 14 hours. That's how long he worked total out of all that time. Now if you put 56 hours, that's a good answer too. Thanks for watching.